so this is my local suppliers lawn dressing now a word of warning not all that falls under the the label lawn dressing is the same stuff so some are loaded with coarse composts and manures and all sorts of other bits and bobs uh, some even include silica sand or river sand or you know there's different compositions with every manufacturer so the best thing for you to do is not just buy a bag or a product of lawn dressing it just says lawn dressing you must go and look at it yourself okay if you're not sure of what to buy then just buy straight up sifted topsoil that's local to your area that will probably be fine so for me i've chosen this product because it is sifted vol brain topsoil which is a local topsoil that for me is a very good quality very sandy which is great for leveling purposes i wanted some organic matter this has got chicken manure in it which is the highest in nitrogen of all the manures which is why i wanted it and i didn't want to pay for sifted compost uh, nor did I want coarse compost, so this is the option for me. Alright, enough chit chat, let's carry on loading and finish this vid. So I'm just, 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 just getting started again on moving some sand around with my Kakuyu Guru lawn leveler. Very easy process. You just think about pushing rather than pulling. So in all circumstances, it's a, it's a this kind of an action. Okay, it's much easier, and you can use, dig it into your waist, and you can use your body's weight instead of pushing. So you don't have to be he-man to push large loads of soil around. You can just use your body weight and start shifting or at least breaking down the little bits of the mounds uh, and then just start pushing. There's another theory or another way of doing all of this and, then, and that is when you bring out each wheelbarrow load you shovel and throw all of that soil out but you do have to be quite strong for that that's a hell of a lot of labor you've just shoveled all the soil into the wheelbarrow in my case I've moved it 80 meters to here and then I have to shovel and throw it again no I'd rather just dump out the load and start pushing it especially when it's going to be easy no rake with a short handle that you have to sit there coloring in i mean i'm not exactly a tall bloke and a normal south african rake is a stupid short thing the same thing for the spades i don't know like what engineers what was going on in their heads when they decided to build those spades that lasher you one of the brands to blame for that there's no reason for it except for maybe transporting in a normal vehicle in which case a 1.8 meter uh, handle or shaft can fit between a normal hatchback uh, seats and that kind of thing so there's no reason make the handles longer so um, anyway yeah you can tell my grade is pretty much this angle right here so most of my pushing is going to be roughly in this direction and that's it Okay, it's Wednesday. I did my top dress, as you can see here. Uh, the three cubic meters came in on Saturday afternoon. I brought in a couple of piles 
on Saturday afternoon then I decided because I'm a good South African to just uh, stop working halfway through the job and light a fire so I went and threw some meat on the fire and then Saturday Sunday went to church did all the morning stuff Sunday afternoon I committed to the job and got it finished up but all in all all of this so moving three cubic meters it's about four four and a half tons took me by myself for only less than two hours to complete a really easy job so let's discuss what it is that you need to know when top dressing all right so before we go through all that chit chat i can just discuss what i've been doing here so my yard's natural grade you can already tell a lot of it started to seep in quite quickly and no i have not yet waited because it's correct to not wait first in my circumstance we'll explain that in a sec but basically that's the grade that i chose here so the yard is going to go to that corner basically why because that's what was existing that's what i like and that's what i'm going to commit to but what it starts us on conversation wise is you need to determine what it is that you want to do in your yard so is it just top dressing is it smoothing out the surface like what i've done is it leveling which uh, unfortunately in the youtube world someone some time ago said i'm going to level my lawn level means level you know you pull out a spirit level or a laser level and you level the lawn uh, and then everybody committed to that wording which is wrong uh, this thing of smoothing out your lawn that's smoothing out your lawn leveling means level but everybody calls it leveling so let's just pretend that that's okay when it's really not but in my case and so that you can understand it better this is both top dressing and smoothing out of the lawn it is not leveling okay so then what is top dressing well top dressing is as it sounds it's just any medium uh, so if you're one of the old school gardeners you're going to want to put down compost uh, which you guys know that i don't generally agree with but it really have to be something specific to the circumstances but let's pretend it was compost you would take that medium and you would spread it across the surface of your lawn not really worrying too much about smoothness and whether or not your lawn is going to be golf course smooth uh, and then that is top dressing that's really it it's a medium that's applicable to your soil type that you hoy over the surface you smooth it out you water it in you let the grass grow back and you start mowing again that's top dressing now most people top dress sort of usually the beginning of spring but you don't have to you do not have to top dress every year you do not have to top dress multiple times a year if you're going through a smoothening or sm smoothing a smoothing process then you may top dress multiple times long story short is you only top dress when the grass is actively growing so that's kind of counterintuitive if you say okay but i must now top dress coming out of winter because the grass is not actively growing it's only just getting started but remember part of our spring renovations includes sculpting and for especially warm season grasses that really kicks them in the backside and it encourages them to grow so if you go through that process and it's also a nice way of getting rid of dead matter after winter and so on then that is one way to just really kick start things and get it going nicely it's a good time to top dress but theoretically you can top dress like with me now i'm technically late to the party it doesn't matter i could top dress in the middle of summer i could top dress in autumn uh, as long as the grass is actively growing i can put it through the pressure of top dressing okay and then if you're not just top dressing you're doing what i'm doing now it's top dressing and smoothing you can see that i've got patches like this here by charlie uh, where it's just slightly deeper and then other patches like that where it's quite deep and then other patches like that where it is very deep that's 10 to 15 centimeters deep and if you follow me on instagram or just know me you would know that i actually already did patch that train dip up during winter with already about 20 centimeters worth of, of um, soil and a stop soil the same lawn dressing that i used here and it grew in nicely but it's definitely my most spongy area again so as i've said in previous videos you don't have to top dress every single year because i just think that it increases the sponginess causes you problems over time um, if you do it too much uh, but it is a good idea to do it if you've got soil that requires this kind of change or if you want to smooth out the area now smoothing out the area is different to top dressing top dressing can be where you add a little bit more organic matter we'll pull my um, opinions out of the equation for that but smoothing requires and this is the more important part it requires less organic matter so less compost basically 
you want more topsoil or a sandy medium for smoothing out a surface because you don't want it to be smoothed out with something organic and then that organic stuff breaks down over time and you just end up changing all those levels because then your work is for nothing so not high organic content for smoothing purposes leveling purposes means that you're going to take this yard that goes like this and you're going to grade it like that which means that you bring in heavy machinery and you'll cut down that part of the yard and you'll move some soil to here and then you'll fill up the rest of this and you'll make it level and in that circumstance, you need perfect drainage. So for a residential garden, level lawn is not always the best thing. You're gonna have more flooding issues and, 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 and your drainage then has to be perfect. So it is best to keep a contour of some kind that you have control over and that you shape year in, year out. So how do you choose what medium to use? Well, the very first thing is you actually have to know what soil you have already. And no, that doesn't mean that you have to go get a soil test done. It just means that you have to do the simple little, you know, put some soil into your into the palm of your hand, wet it, so make it a little bit damp, not drain it from your hand, just a bit damp. You squeeze it into a ball and you first check or try and figure out if you can notice if there are any if there's any grit in it. So stones or sandy stuff in it. If you feel it's completely smooth, you're probably leaning more towards clay. If you feel it's a bit sandy or stony, then it's a little bit sandy or stonier or siltier. Now, if it, if you push it into a little ball and it stays in that ball after you try and break it up or it stretches out, you're leaning more towards clay. If it breaks up almost instantly, it is obviously leaning more towards sand. And if it breaks up uh, and has a darker structure to it, you can see a bit of organic content in it and it's you know just got that, that darker, richer look to it. Then you're leaning more towards loam, which is kind of what you want. Uh, but you, if you've got loamy soil, you actually want more towards the sandier side for, for turf care. However, if you've got clay, the last thing you want to do is add sand to it. And this brings me to that being another medium. And that's, let's just talk about those mediums for a second. You've got compost, which we've spoken about. Topsoil, which is what I'll recommend to anybody who's not sure of what to use. Just make sure your topsoil doesn't have stones in it. There's lots of suppliers in South Africa that keep adding stone component to their topsoil. It must be sifted. Proper, fine, sifted topsoil. And then you get sand. And sand is this conversation that is happening on YouTube all over the place. And you've got to really choose your battles carefully. If you've just laid new sod, that sod is grown on a clay layer. And that clay layer, or clay, when sand is added to it, makes a rock-like substance. And that can cause you grief for years. It is the reason that, let me show you something here. If we walk to where you guys know that I had that drain dug out. Now, I've also told you before, I've got low clay in my, in my yard. It's mostly sandy and stony, but when clay and sand mix, I mean, that is, that's, that is my soil. And that is the majority of Pretoria and the Haarfeld. And um, when you get down to Cape Town, it gets a bit sandier with a bit more of a calytic um, kind of profile as well. A different set of issues. KZN is probably the, the most loamy of the of the regions um, if I'm remembering correctly but this wasn't like this it was quite bad but it wasn't like this this is now horrendous it's, it's, it's an actual rock like substance and it's only because the layers of clay which aren't a problem on their own mixed with the sand when the guys turned the soil to get these drains uh, put in so that equaled the definite problem it's now stuffed up this lawn the only way to fix it is by adding huge amounts of compost and to improve the drainage no not by adding sand it's by adding compost and wetting agents to help saturate that is it manual labor and correct products thereafter so whilst I just walk back into the shade it basically means the medium that you choose is or does tie into what you already have going got or what you've already got going on in your yard already uh, just because you see sand being used by some guys, I think it's like misconstrued information. It's because they see that sand gets used on golf courses. But you must remember that the golf course, the putting green in particular, uh, that is built on <laughs> a roughly 900 millimeters of sand. That sand though is specific USGA grade, generally 2% organic matter, and, 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 and it's for the objective is predictability. You do not want that in your yard because you're going to have to put in the kind of input value 
So fertilizing, watering, uh, labor, all that kind of stuff has to now equate to what a golf course does in your own backyard. If you want to keep things simpler, you need to add organic matter. Yes, that means though that you're going to have, excuse me, things falling in my head here from the street. It means that you're going to have more um, unpredictability or, or less predictability. And it means that you're going to have these little things that chop and change all the time. But you're going to be able to retain moisture better. And you're going to be able to uh, keep a higher nu nutritional value in the soil, which means that you don't have to keep adding inputs all the time. If you decide to go on vacation, the yard's not just going to fall apart. It is important to maintain a normal soil structure in your home garden. It is important. So for me, if you're not sure about anything, use a good sifted topsoil. And that obviously means as well, if you guys definitely want to commit to sand, you must know that there's a difference between uh, just something like river sand or building types of sands versus silica sand. Silica sand is a specific product that is very neutral, whereas building sands are a mixture of different stones, basically stone profiles, rock types and that kind of thing, with all different mineral sources, essentially. They get ground down and then that's how they make the sand. So it'll have different sizes, it'll have different um, value in it, and some of it can be problematic as far as uh, some metal and mineral values. Normally not too bad, but it can be. Okay, so there, there are differences between silica. Uh, I think I said when I was mentioning the USGA uh, profile earlier on, that's not sand, that's silica. Okay, we call it silica sand because it's you know sandy looking, but it's silica. Um, you've got to be careful with normal sands, and you definitely don't want to put down something like silica if it's not in uh, or if the grass is not actively growing. If your grass is kind of stagnant. I've got one or two clients who got information to put down silica and they know that that is one of the best things to use for smoothing out that surface. So they went ahead and committed to it, but it's slightly the wrong time, just a little bit too close to winter. And it's left dead patches. And it's not because the grass couldn't go through, um, you know, in let's say normal circumstances. It's because there was just too much of that bogging down effect. So the fine sand uh, ended up you know as it gets watered and what have you it weighs down the grass it causes that smothering effect to happen even for tough grasses like kuyu so stay away from it if you're not sure and if you're really not sure and you still want to do it then a coarser sand is actually the best thing to, to go for because the grass can still wiggle its way through and pop its head out the top get the sunlight and start using mother nature to its advantage water will also penetrate faster but if it's if it's fine it's gonna densen up and give you the smoother surface but that also means close up more and that's a negative. I almost forgot to mention for those laying or who have just laid new sod and you're trying to smooth out those chunky bits, don't just go and put down compost. You do need organic matter in this process. You don't just want to put sand straight onto the new sod because of the clay foundation, as I mentioned just now. What you want though is like a 70-30 or a 50-50 mix of sifted topsoil with a good sifted compost. Uh, you don't just want plain organic matter because no leveling will happen. Uh, and you don't just want sand because you're going to end up with that clay issue or that, that rock-like issue. So go with a mix that you're comfortable with between sifted compost and sifted topsoil. And then over the next couple of seasons, the, the next couple of dressing sessions, you reaccommodate depending on how the grass is looking, the profiles looking, all that kind of stuff over time. You readdress per situation, per occasion, should I say. Right, next top tip is to use one of these. This is a lawn leveler. This is the Kakuyu Guru, Guru lawn leveler that I supply on my, on my site. You can see my, where my dog peepees. And this is a fantastic product. The right size, if you look at the handle, I'm now miles from the, from the actual device. And this change in grade means that I have much less downward force, which means that it's easier for me to push heavier loads moving forward. Just the long handle on its own. Now this obviously has five bars with rounded edges, which means that I don't damage the ground quite as much. It also means that any stones get built up into these little voids and it's easy to pick them out if it's big stones or clumps get broken up quite nice and easily. But that rounded edge versus a hard angle iron edge means that I don't uh, tear into the grass as I'm busy moving. So existing uh, turf, so for example, like now, I never sculpt first. This wasn't a start of the season process. This is now an active growing season portion um, or process. It means that now this little rounded edge is not damaging my existing turf. I'm able to push it over and not damage anything. So this guy saved me 
big time. I've used it before on many different projects. I've never used it in my own yard for lawn leveling, but on customer projects, I use this thing all the time. It's fantastic. It seems so silly to say, okay, cool, that this leveler is great, but it is bloody marvelous. And I'm not just saying it because I sold the thing. That's because it really is. It's by far the best leveler that I've ever used for many reasons. Size, the way it works, its physical weight, its ability to strip down and fit into a normal car if I just want to take it in my own vehicle instead of in a bucky or a van. Um, then I've even once had the complaint where somebody said to me, oh, but somebody told me that this handle's gonna get hot. But remember, alum aluminium is used on heat sinks because it's able to not only pick up heat quickly, but also dissipate heat quickly. So please don't give me that argument. Uh, I had this thing outside in the sun with me at 34 degrees Celsius all weekend and I was fine. I never once burnt my little precious fingers. But that portion of the conversation is just to tell you that using some good tools will help you a lot. I used, for example, a wheelbarrow, just a regular old building uh, construction top wheelbarrow to get the soil out here. And I wish that I had one of these um, gorilla carts, you know, these proper carts that can handle like 200 kilograms of soil and it's got four wheels on it at least and a tipping bucket. That would have made my life much easier. I think it would have even reduced my time because all of my time was based on loading. I only did about 30 minutes of smoothing out the surface. If I could have loaded at double the rate that I did, it would have been great. And because the, uh, the construction type wheelbarrow that I have has like that hard front wheel, it means that if I had something with a pneumatic wheel, I wouldn't have broken the tiles in just around my, there by my courtyard coming down through my garage, there's tiles there. The hard and heavy wheelbarrow moving down those steps, uh, I broke my tiles. If I had pneumatic wheels, it wouldn't have happened. Uh, and I wouldn't have messed as much soil along the way as well. So definitely tools, obviously costs more money, it adds to your project, uh, but they're the type of thing that you keep for years. So it just, it helps you so much more that it makes the job more enjoyable. And that enjoy factor, that enjoyable factor is what we want from our gardens. We don't just mow our lawns to, you know, for nothing. It's, it's for the enjoyment and the pleasure thereof. So if working in it, and getting, let's say, minimizing all the crappy parts of it is uh, doable by having lack of tools, then do it. It is good. <laughs> all right, and then the last portion of the conversation is to water or not water straight after you've put down whatever medium it is that you would have put down. The simple answer is that you need to determine uh, what the state of the grass was beforehand, firstly, and what type of medium you're going to put down. So if it's a medium that can way down the existing turf so for example i had a, a good turf structure at about 11 millimeters is where i mowed this down to before uh, starting with the project i had grass there you want the grass to stick out through the surface so in my case if i wet and i did actually wet down at the bottom of the yard so i'm going to show it to you in a second but if you wet the soil the soil bogs down and weighs down on the grass it makes it much harder for the leaf to pop out which means that your recovery time is significantly slowed Whereas if you leave it dry, the grass, and especially on a sandier profile, the grass, so my topsoil, the grass is able to poke its head back out through the top, see the sun, and that process increases the efficiency of the whole pro um, uh, process much better. So your lawn leveling situation uh, recovers quickly uh, if you do it that way. So that means leave it dry actually for a longer period of time. But then, of course, you actually still need to water the grass. You can't just stop watering it. The, the telltale sign, let's say the marker at which you st or the point at which you start watering, is when you see the tip starting to stick out all over the place. So let me show you those examples because it means basically today, now Wednesday, so two days after doing this, is when I start watering. So for example, right here, this is where I watered. And you can tell some of it's starting to come through, but only where, it's, where it was already very shallow, like a 10 to 15 mil marker. Here, you can clearly tell, especially where there's one or two uh, sets of blades have started coming through the rest of them are all under here and they're now suffering they're getting bogged down only as this dries out is it going to allow the stuff to push back through and because it's a good sandy structure and not clay that's on the surface this stuff will just break up you can see now just by me touching it, it means that that's going to dry just a little bit faster and i guarantee you by tomorrow in fact even right now while i'm doing it more blades are starting to stick them their heads out now if i go over to the drier section which is way deeper you can tell here in the middle nothing started coming through yet but just slightly to the left of it the blades are already coming through and all the way through here there's little 
uh, tips of the grass is already starting to stick out all over the place. If I had wet this, it would have bogged down. This is way deeper than that little patch over there. It would have bogged down significantly and I would have a big problem or at least a much slower recovery. And then in very, very deep areas like this or this, I may kill off even Kikuyu under that area because this is like 10 centimeters. So even though you can bog down grasses like Bermuda and Kikuyu, uh, definitely not like the Alems and Buffaloes, but Bermuda and Kikuyu in particular, not, no grass actually wants to be bogged down. They can handle it, but they don't want to be. So take note of the medium. If you can see, or if you're not sure, I mean, if you're really not sure, just send me an email. But if you can see that it's gonna weigh down the grass, as in smother the grass, don't wet it yet. Let it come through, uh, or wet, no, don't wet before you start this project. <laughs> Ignore, ignore that. Don't ever wait before you start this type of project. You'll just be in a muddy mess the whole time. Start on a dry day. Start with dry product. Uh, let's hope your soil supply gives you dry sand, soil, and that's really, that's really it. Keep it nice and simple. Don't overthink this process either. This video is going to be way too long for even what I want to have dealt with. Um, but yeah, keep the project simple. There's lots of videos that you can go watch and make your life complicated on. Uh, I was going to tell you, oh, you should go and fill up all the low-lying areas first, and then it sounds fancier, but it's all rubbish, man. Anyway, if you can see that there's a dip, and you've already put some sand somewhere else, just move the sand to the dip and fill it in. I mean, there's no rocket science there. Anyway, <laughs> let me come back and see if there's something else that I've forgotten, and then we'll close off the video. Ah, here I found the perfect example. See, dry soil on top of the grass, and you can see that it's made this kind of like layer here, because there's obviously some morning dew check the grass is healthy it's popping its head back up and I'm just gently gently touching on the soil that means there's the proof right there don't wet don't wet the soil because it'll bog down this grass there's nothing wrong with it it's still green it's happy it's wanting to come through the surface and it will but the minute it starts sticking up like this so basically for me it's today I can now start watering that but if I watered it earlier I would have bogged it down Okay, no, just busy editing this, and it's way longer than I want it to be. Sorry for that. So I'm just going to end it at this. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, hit the little bell notification. If you're not sure about anything, you get on my website, you email me from there, and I'll try and help you out. Or you just comment on the, on the video or in social media or whatever, and I'll reply answering your questions to the best of my ability. Anyway, cheers.